guys, welcome back to my channel one more time. How are you guys doing? I hope you guys are doing great and having a great day. But today I'm excited to film because the other day I was sitting on my couch and I was like thinking to myself, I'm like, Leslie, you know, you do a lot of videos about your daily life, which you guys see on my weekly vlogs. Um, I do a lot of personal videos. I do videos about my religion and I do videos about my personal, like very personal life. I mean, I've talked to you guys, you guys know that I've been a teen mom, but I haven't have really sat down and done a video where I tell you guys like eight like points, or not eight, because eight came out of nowhere, but um, like just advice or just, yeah, advice, advice about being a teen mom. Uh, I think it took me so long to maybe do this video or these types of videos because I've I felt like I didn't have a voice for very long because I didn't know what I was doing for very long. Um, and so I feel like not like not until now did I feel something in me that actually said, Leslie, I think it's time to talk to your subscribers, to talk to your team moms out there, and to try to help them out with life, um, to tell them that t being a mom, being a teen mom isn't all about maybe what they thought it was about, um, and things like that. So I'm so excited for this video because I wrote down eight like things on what I would tell a teen mom if she came up to me and was like, hey, I want some advice. But um, I also wanted to say in the future if I do these kinds of videos again, or this type of video again, then um, I just want to let you guys know that it's all part of my experience. It's what I've learned being a teen mom. We all have different experiences. So um, just know that if you're a teen mom, you're here on YouTube, you want to start YouTube, you want to do maybe this type of video, that's awesome because we all experience things so differently in our lives. So maybe what I went through as a teen mom, you did, never went through, but somebody else went through so you can relate to each other. So I feel like for so long, I, what, I haven't been able to connect with my teen moms and I feel like that's what I just want to do today like connect with you talk to you give you some advice um, I've been doing this for five years now and I'm still a teen mom I just turned 19 so next year I won't be a teen mom actually I'll actually be um, a mom just a mom so uh, <laughs> it's kind of hard to say that but I think in my heart I will always carry around that I was a teen mom because it's something that has shaped me, it's something that has made me. So um, yeah, Anthony's about to turn five years old, so I'm, it's kind of crazy to think that I have a five year old. I feel like now I can kind of talk about my experience because I am in a better place. So I'm actually really happy that I didn't try to like do these type of videos earlier because um, maybe I would have just been talking out of like my butt because uh, that's the way I was back then. I would just talk and talk and think that I know what I was talking about but in reality I didn't know anything that I was talking about. So um, also I wanted to say that, um, what did I want to say, that if you're not a teen mom, you watch my videos, I don't know, you're maybe not even a mom or you are a mom, whatever age you're watching this then um, just feel free to sit and watch. You could still really, I'm not saying that this is like only teen mom things, like don't come if you're not a teen mom, don't watch this. Like no, because you can still relate to something, you can still get something out of this. So just know that, feel free to watch it and feel free to hear what I have to say. Um, if you're, um, it's also if you're a teen mom, maybe you have like an eight, nine year old, maybe if you've gone through something that you feel like it is very important to tell others, leave them in the comments down below. If you're whatever age mom you are and you have a little bit of experience, you want to tell us your advice, some of the experience that you went through, something that will help us out through life, that would be great. I would love to hear that especially me so here we go on things that I would tell a teen mom that came up to me and was like give me some of your advice <laughs> one don't act like you have it all together yes it's so important I was 13 years old when I had Anthony crazy insane I know we can sit there and talk about that a whole another day but I pretended to have it all together I was pretending to um, that I had it on my own, but in reality, I, did, I didn't have anything, and I wish I would have not made it seem like I did, because so many people, whenever you make it seem like you have it all together, a lot of people maybe look up to you, or maybe just kind of, maybe they don't look up to you, maybe they're like, no, you don't, honey, like, I'm pretty sure nobody believed me whenever I pretended to have it all together, but I, I feel like being vulnerable has always been a struggle of mine, so, um, 
if I could go back and do it all over again, I would I would love to put a lot more attention or a lot more light on the person that was helping me, which was my mom. So instead of giving me all the credit, like, uh, oh, I have a crib for my baby, and I have this master bedroom, and I have this, and I have that. You know, like, I would do it more of, like, well, my mom, thanks to my mom, she's helped me out a lot. Like, now that I'm older, I thank my mom. Like, I talk to people, they're like, oh, Leslie, how do you do this? My mom. Leslie, how do you do that? My mom. How did you get, how were you able to do this? My mom. Like, thankfully, like, I, I'll tell them, like, I'm so thankful to have my mom around. Uh, but before, I was not like that. Like, I would pretend to have it all together back then. It was just all me, me, me. It's really important to not pretend like you have it all together because at the end of the day, people know that you don't have it all together or people are going to figure it out or you're just going to live with it your whole life. So, yeah. Uh, number two is accept help. I think that was one of the hardest things and it ties in with don't act like you have it all together because um, since I had it all together I feel like I couldn't get help because I had it all together so whenever people would be like oh I can babysit him or oh I can do this or I can do that it was like uh, no I don't need your help or like oh here's you know, here's five dollars, or you're gonna go run to the store, let me watch him for like five minutes, and you're like, oh no, like, no, I have it all together. Like, I can take him to the grocery store, and he won't cry because I'm a great mom, you know, like that type of thing. I was just like that, and it took me a few years to actually realize that. Um, so I had Anthony when I was 13, Leo when I was 16, and like a year after I had Leo, whenever I realized that I needed help, like, I need to help with my kids because I can't do it all. I'm gonna go crazy. And for a little bit, I'm like, I can't go out, and I can't do that, and I can't do this because I thought that I was a bad mom if I did that. But in reality, um, if I accepted the help that my mom, that AJ's parents were giving me, that AJ was giving me, that other people were giving me, if I accepted that help and I went out for like an hour, two hours, a month maybe, it would make me a little less stressed and a little bit more of a better mom, if that makes any sense. So accept help. If somebody wants to babysit your kid, of course you need to trust them, make sure that they're going to take care of your kids, right? I totally understand that. If you don't trust them, don't leave them with your kids. Um, but if somebody wants to take care of your kids for like an hour or two while you go out and eat dinner with your friends or with your husband or with your loved one, do it. Like, it'll help you become a better mom because you let go of all that stress. You, you feel loved for a little bit and you feel important for a little bit and that is very important. Number three, money does not equal love. So for me... <laughs> Oh, let's see. The reason why I say this is because a lot of the time I would make it seem like I had all like some money. I would, I would buy Anthony expensive clothes, but in reality, it was my mom buying it. Um, you know, the crib. I remember I threw this huge fit, and of course, this is probably gonna annoy and irk a lot of you guys because I mean, to, for me to even say this is a lot because it kind of just makes me want to like choke the old me. But I remember I we went to Babies R Us to buy a crib and I wanted the most expensive crib like I wanted an expensive crib and my mom was like Leslie no you don't need an expensive crib like you don't need like here's like let's get a cheap one let's get one that's on sale and I'm like no mom I'm like what do you mean I'm like no I'm not gonna buy my kid no a hundred dollar crib and stuff like that and so I was just very it's just all about money like and it's sad to say but like and now that I've grown up and I've worked for my money and I've actually like realized what it what it takes to make money um, it's, I, I, I value it a lot more, but not in, like, possessions, but rather in, like, saving for their college and, you know, putting it into somewhere where, like, it's a good investment, but rather than, like, just showing it off. And I remember when Anthony was born, I would put him Jordans on, I'd put him, like, this Jordan things on, I'd, I'd buy him, like, expensive shoes, things like that, and in reality, he didn't need those things, and I felt like just because I was buying him things, I meant that I loved him, but it does not mean that, like, true love is whenever you can be poor as heck in life, but still show your kids and work hard for them, and um, just love them all in all, no matter what, like, that's important, and I've learned that, and so... Um, now I can just, you know, buy my kids some yard sale clothes and I'd be good to go. Not that that makes me a bad mom. That doesn't make anybody a bad mom. But, um, I learned that money does not equal love. And it's very important for, it was very important for me to learn that. Because I was just all about that money, money, money. And, um, it was bad for a little bit. So, um, and I see a lot of teen moms also still do this. Like, go on social media and they pretend like they have all the money in the world. They dress their kids in, like, this expensive clothing. clothing. And I'm just like, 
if I do get a Jordan outfit now, it's because I got it on sale or I got it at thrift store or I got it at garage sales now because I spent so much money on it. I feel like I'm so proud nowadays whenever I'm like, people are like, oh, that's so cute. I'm like, yeah, I got it at garage sale. Yeah, I got it at a thrift store. Yeah, I got it like, you know, Goodwill. And they're like, oh, really? I'm like, yeah. And it's like name brand and I feel like so proud about saying that. But before, like, I would have to spend, like, if it was Jordan's, I'd have to spend like $100 on my kid's shoes and it was just kind of bad. So... That's number that. th number four is you don't have to have a complete life plan. I felt like whenever I had Anthony, everyone would ask me like, "What are you gonna do with your life now that you have a kid?" Like you know, like stuff like that. And I'm just like, Ugh. I feel like I had to come up with a life plan. I felt like I needed to know what to say. So I would make, I like made this whole life plan. Now that I have Anthony, I'm gonna finish high school. I'm gonna go to college. I'm gonna go to college for this. I'm gonna do after college. Like I felt like I needed to explain this to people, um, so that they think that I'm a better person, a better mom. So I've realized now that I've graduated high school and I've learned and I've learned stuff about me and what I love to do that I don't have to have it all together. And all planned out because guess what? A lot of the time, in my point of view, of course, this might not relate to you at all. It might relate to you. This just has to do with my religious beliefs. I feel like God called me to whatever he calls me to and he's going to do that. And I feel like that's what I'm waiting for, for his call to do whatever he calls me to do. And right now, um, it can, I don't, I'm not interested in going to college. And I tell people now, like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know. And a lot of people get frustrated with me, but I'm like, it's the truth. It's the truth. I don't know what I'm gonna do yet and I feel like if somebody ever were to ask me like what are you gonna do like I don't know and if that's okay like it's okay I have the help that I need I have the help that I need I have uh, my kids they're healthy they're getting taken care of they're they're getting taken care of so I feel like I I wish I didn't spend so much of my time trying to explain to people what I was gonna do or this whole like made up story and in reality Sometimes our plans don't go as planned. So Number five is it's okay to be scared. It's really, really, it's really okay to be scared. Um, I feel like whenever I was pregnant with Anthony, I made it seem like I wasn't scared. I made it seem like I was something that I wasn't. But in reality, I was super scared because I was like, what am I going to do with a kid? Like, it was, I felt like I needed to pretend like I was okay, but I wasn't. I feel like it really hit me while I was pregnant with Leah because I got pregnant with her and I didn't I wasn't expecting to get pregnant with her um, and it really hit me there where I was pretending till that day that I wasn't scared but in reality I was like what the heck am I gonna do with two kids like but I was pretending that it was all okay and that I wasn't scared but in reality I'm like I'm scared and so I realized that it's okay to be scared of life sometimes it's okay to be scared of your situations. It's okay. It's okay to be scared of the unknown. But I think the the best thing of life is whenever I go and talk to my mom. I go and talk to um, Cora. I go and talk to my church family. I go and talk talk to friends that know a, a little bit more than I do. That are more experienced in life. And I'm like, hey, I don't know what I'm gonna do after I high school. I go. I don't know. I don't want to go to college. I don't know what I'm gonna do after high school. I don't know. And they're and whenever they tell me like a word of advice, a word of encouragement, like it's gonna be okay. Like you're gonna get through it. Then it's so like it brings a relief in me. And if I'm just open about what I'm scared of, if I'm open about what I'm worried about, then I won't be as scared and I'll know what to expect but I was just so close back then where I'm like I have to I like it it's all together I can't say that I'm scared I can't say that I'm this so number six is your relationship doesn't have to be perfect I wish I would have known this back then too I feel like uh I had to pretend like my relationship with their dad was really good and I had to pretend like people just expected me to like like expected a lot from our relationships from our relationship but I felt like it I wish I would have not pretended like it was all okay because at the end of the day like what relationship is fine like no no one's relationship like we all get upset at each other but I feel like if I would have known this about myself or if I would have just let myself think that I didn't have to have it all together again um, with my relationship with their dad I think that it would have my life would have gone a little bit more smoother um, and stuff like that it just all the laughs on social media, all those smiles, all those kissy pictures, a lot of time don't really represent what your relationship's about. And I feel like maybe what I would have done and gone back to do is just really be raw and open with with my relationship 
because a lot of people expect their relationships to be a lot of teen a lot of teen parents a lot of teen moms a lot of teen dads they like to make and portray something that it's not i feel like it's okay to to let others know that maybe your relationship isn't as perfect maybe you guys are working your things out maybe it's not all sunshine and rainbows and if you try to make it like people probably are gonna figure it out that you guys aren't very happy or that you guys are just pretending to be happy they're gonna figure it out so i feel like now that i've realized that and i've realized that our we have a lot of problems in it are like in it itself then I feel like I can go to others and talk about those problems and you know try to find some counseling or try to do this um and it's a tough it's a I'm in a tough place to talk about this because I'm in a tough place in our relationship if there's even a relationship I don't even know what do I mean? it's a it's a tough situation right now with with her dad but I feel like just don't act like you have it together like it's okay to act happy it's okay to take pictures but also realize that the bad times it's all the time wherever you see the real person number seven listen learn and move on um that's probably something that i struggled with as well i didn't want to i didn't want to take advice from anybody um and if they did give me advice bad advice i think i would just be really bitter towards it and um if they told me something that i'm doing wrong i'd just be really bitter towards it and i'd just be like no like and I would probably wouldn't tell them off or anything, but it, I would keep it in my heart. And it just, it would just be really bitter. And I remember I would just be that person. I'm not doing it right. I'm not doing it right. Like they told me I wasn't doing right. They told me I needed to put a diaper on this way. They told me I needed to wipe in that way. They told me I needed to put the formula in this way. And I realized that if somebody tells you something, you didn't know it. Guess what? Learn from it. If you weren't doing it right, do it right. And um, listen to them. Learn it and move on. You did something wrong move on like if you did something right great move on it's it's important to move on in life like you, you don't always have to be stuck in the situations if you're for example you like to do bad things while you have kids um and somebody tells you hey like let's see you're not supposed to be doing that hey you you're not supposed to be doing that you have kids instead you get really bitter and you do it more just because that person told you not to do it it just brings you out to a whole another problem but if you realize hey i really shouldn't be doing that while i'm having while i'm trying to raise my kid then guess what listen to it take it learn from it stop doing it and move on then then you'll start like being becoming what you want to become i think it's so important to just move number eight um, your kids are not your solution to your problems in life. Um, I felt like for a long time I was holding a lot of bitterness and resentment th towards like never feeling loved as a kid. Um, and so I felt like I was going to be able to love my kids because I wasn't able to like feel that when I was a child. So I was like, well, I'm just gonna, like, I'm going to love Anthony. I'm going to love him. I'm, you know, I felt like he was going to be my solution um and that wasn't it it's like i was looking for a solution in him i mean they can make him better of course like having a child was like like i was overwhelmed with love and i he changed me completely but i felt like i still was dealing with the bitterness of life i was still like he didn't fix it i feel like a lot of people go into it trying to fix what they had it maybe in their past and in reality it doesn't really fix it it just makes it a little bit harder <laughs> to work with because now you you don't have time to actually fix your problem maybe your bitterness and and your anger towards whatever it is you have but now you have a child to actually like take care of and you don't have really time for it so just know that your kids if you're a teen mom and you went into it with oh i'm gonna have a kid because it's gonna make our relationship better it's gonna you know it's gonna make my relationship better with whoever blah 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 it's gonna fix it's gonna fix problems it really isn't it'll probably bring a lot more strain into your relationships it'll probably make you not have as much time to fix your problems and or maybe even more bitter because guess what it's hard it's hard work taking care of a child so just know that both of my little kids knocked out both of them knocked out oh they're so sweet you guys um but that's really it that's it i don't know if that made any sense i try to make as much sense as i could with it um but just know if you're a teen mom um if you're going into it i feel like i would love to see more teen moms who say hey i don't i don't know what i'm doing but maybe you can help me out and i feel like that's the best thing that you could do 
So, thank you guys so much for watching. I can't believe that I'm going to be five, like, I'm going to be a mom. I've been a mom for five years already. It's kind of insane to think because I never thought I would make it this far. And I, I'm, I'm proud of who I've become. I'm proud of who my children are. And I feel like if you're watching this just now and you're a new subscriber, you're a new fan of mine or whatever, I feel like you know, I, I want you to know that I haven't always been this way. I've struggled to get to where I am. So I feel like if you look at me and maybe you envy me, maybe you want what I have, it's a lot of years of learning, of tripping and falling and getting back up. But I feel like that's what makes you the person who you are. So just know that you have your own journey. You have your own journey in life that guess what? We might go through the words woods trip stumble fall but we always get back up and you have to learn you have to grow up if you're a teen mom do it for your little kid do it do it for yourself you know a lot of time they say do it for your kid do it for your kid but guess what at the end of the day you're doing it for yourself because at the end of the day your kids are going to turn 18 19 20 move out of your house move out and guess what guess what are you left with you're left with whatever you whatever memories you made whatever you learned in life and they're going to move on so your kids yes your kid do it for your kid because they deserve a better you they deserve the best you but you also deserve the best you you deserve to love yourself you deserve to create a future for yourself and don't ever let anyone make you feel bad for, for trying to better yourself thank you guys so much for watching and i'll talk to you guys later bye